This is VOA. My name is Misha Kamadovsky, and joining me now is President of Georgia, Salam Azarbishvili. Madam President, thank you very much for making time for VOA, especially during such troubling times for your country. Thank you. Thank you. And today we're going to discuss a controversial foreign agent bill that was passed by the Georgian parliament. Critics argue that it mirrors a similar law in Russia designed initially to protect national sovereignty, but in practice used to target opposition voices. Uh, Madam President, why does uh, why does the potential adoption of this law pose a threat to your country? Uh, because we are at a very critical time uh, in our traveling towards the European Union. We just got in December, last December, uh, the status of candidate to the European Union. That was not uh, absolutely clear that we were going to get it, but we got it and the population was... Uh, uh, absolutely enthusiastic about uh, this result. Uh, and uh, then we see that we have the possibility by the end of the year or beginning of next year uh, to get the next step, which is the opening of the negotiations of accession. Uh, and so it's an important, extremely important time. And at this very important time, we have a number of recommendations that have been presented by the uh, European Commission uh, that we should be working upon uh, to get the maximum chances to open negotiations. And instead of doing that, we see uh, that the authorities uh, are taking uh, another road, which uh, is uh, not adopting the different reforms that we are asked to adopt, especially in the field of uh, uh, justice reform, or anti-corruption, uh, and on the contrary, they are representing a law that was presented last year, was said to be not conform to European values, was criticized by the civil society, was rejected by also mass demonstrations, and was taken back by the authorities with a promise to its own population that it was not going to be ever uh, discussed or represented. and. As uh, it uh, happens, this was a lie, uh, and it is represented at the worst time because we should be working on the positive legislation that is expected from us. Uh, and we have not very many months because uh, by the end of June, we should have accomplished some of the steps because the uh, conclusion, the recommendations of the EU Commission are expected by September, October. Uh, so time is counted and we're losing this time uh, to replicate some Russian laws that the public here uh, knows very well how it was used in Russia. Uh, it was used uh, to uh, limit the capacity of the civil society to act as a civil society, to defend uh, human rights, uh, to defend the political rights, and it was also used against uh, the free media. Uh, so uh, we are in the, the, this space that has been Soviet, which I don't like uh, to call post-Soviet, and I'm even fighting against that. Uh, but there are some things that we know uh, how it happens, and we don't want to see it happening in Georgia. And another thing is that it's parallel with uh, a rhetoric that has been uh, that has restarted, I would say, uh, two months ago. Uh, that is very critical, uh, very anti-Western, anti-American and anti-European, accusing our partners, uh, those that have helped uh, Georgia to um, uh, really become independent, have state institutions. They're accused of uh, wanting to start here a second front, wanting to uh, foment uh, destabilization, wanting to overthrow uh, the government, uh, so all of that is creating an atmosphere, and that is what the population is reacting to. It's everything together. It's not just uh, the law, because one law you could always say, well, yes, they have lied to us, they have represented it, but maybe it can be arranged. But it's not one law, it's a number of laws. I've by now vetoed six laws, uh, because I've said that I would veto every law that goes against the spirit and the letter of the recommendations of the European Commission, uh, because that's going against uh, the European integration path. Madam President, like just to clarify, can you and will you veto this legislation? Yes, 
uh, I can veto, and I'm telling you that I vetoed the six uh, laws for the same reasons that they were anti-European values and not uh, going in the right direction. And I've announced that, and I will do the same with this one, which is clearly not in line, as, as I've said all our partners very clearly, loud and clear, uh, that this is not conform to European values and uh, recommendations. So I will veto it, and it will be a veto that will be overthrown because uh, the majority is in the end, hands uh, of the ruling party. Uh, but this veto is a representation of the voice of the population that is on the streets. Uh, it is uh, symbolic as much as this opposition is symbolic. And from then on, uh, we have to move to the only um, way out and way back, I would say, to our European uh, and integration past, which are elections, elections in which a new majority has to come in and a new majority that will abolish the laws that are going against the European integration and bring in the laws that are asked and that will bring us closer uh, to our European integration priorities. Madam President, but can the Georgian Dream Party override such a veto from your side? Yes, I told you, they can override the veto. They will override the veto as they have overridden all the vetoes that I've put under the same concern of being anti-European legislation. Uh, but again, the change will not come law by law. It will come from the elections when and if the Georgian population, as I think they will, uh, will confirm uh, their European preferences in the next elections on 26th of October, bring a new form of uh, uh, majority coalition or whatever it will be that will be definitely and clearly pro-European and that will reverse the laws that are by now an obstacle to our European path and to the opening of negotiations of adhesion. Madam President, you just mentioned the, reac the reaction from uh, your partners and White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre recently expressed deep concern over this legislation, stating that its passage would necessitate a fundamental uh, reassessment of U.S. relations with Georgia. What's your reaction to this statement? Well, my reaction is the same. I had the visit yesterday. We had the visit uh, of Mr. O'Brien uh, also presenting the, the State Department that came specifically to Georgia to see uh, what was uh, happening and tell us uh, what was the uh, position of the United States. We had today many visits of our European partners, uh, ministers of different Scandinavian countries, uh, and there are other visits that are uh, in, the, in line. Uh, so it's very clear uh, that the position of our partners is well known, uh, is uh, the same, that this law is not conform to the uh, European uh, values. Uh, and that is something that is also told to uh, the authorities. Now, my position is that any reaction of our partners, whether American or uh, Europeans, uh, reacting to this law and to other laws, uh, in terms of posing our uh, candidate status or imposing some sanctions on the visas, for instance, uh, in general on the population. It's something that should wait for what is a democratic moment, which are elections. Uh, elections will determine what the population wants, whether it confirms this European pass, which I think it will, and then uh, it's... Uh, uh, clear what should be the reaction uh, of our partners. It should be to support this pass. If the Georgian population, which I don't think will happen, decides that it doesn't want to continue on that European pass, then yes, uh, clearly the reactions to be expected from our partners. Individual uh, sanctions are something I do not comment upon. That is not of my um, resort and that is up to the individual nations or uh, organizations to decide upon. But today we need the population, the public opinion, the vast majority of the pro-European Georgians need the support of our international partners. That's why crowds have taken to the streets to voice their support for Georgia, uh, for its European path and uh, for you, if I may. From a historical perspective, can we draw 
state parallels between the demonstration happening right here, uh, uh, right now in Georgia, and uh, the revolution of dignity in Ukraine? And how likely is it is that the response from the Georgian Dream Party will resemble the actions we witnessed in the street on the streets of Kyiv in 2014? Uh, I don't like the comparisons, and if we have to compare it with uh, anything, we have to compare it with the Georgian past, uh, which has been a series of reactions of the uh, vast majority of the population each time when uh, the Georgian identity and independence are at stake. And what everybody has to understand today is that for the Georgian uh, population, for everyone here uh, today, Georgian independence is equated to the European past and to the Western integration, to Euro-Atlantic integration. Uh, we know that if we lose that uh, support and that community, we remain isolated uh, in front of uh, Russia. And that means that there will be, uh, the uh, independence will be at stake. That's why there is such a strong support for the European past. Maybe not everyone understands uh, the intricacies of what the European Union is about, about the process of accession, but everyone understands that our freedom, our independence, and our future is linked to Europe. And two quick questions, if I may. There is a growing discussion about potential modifications to this law to mitigate its damaging effects. And can the Georgian Dream Party be trusted in this pro process, in this regard? For me and for the vast majority of the people that are demonstrating on the streets, no, we do not trust uh, somebody that has presented the law, uh, then rejected it, then promised that it will not happen again, and then reintroduce it without any logical need, any political need. Otherwise, there would have to be some arguments why that was so much needed. So it's just a confrontation with one's own population for no good reason. It's just pushing towards more polarization for no good reason. Uh, and I don't think that what is intrinsically bad can be amended. President Robishvili, forgive my wordplay here, but uh, what is the real Georgian dream of the Georgian people? Because according to the statistics, 80% of Georgians support the European path of their country. So what, it, what it's clear. like? The Georgian dream. So clear. The Georgian dream, I don't know, but the real Georgian dream of the real population is the European dream. And that's why you have seen these crowds, not only now today manifesting on the streets, but the crowds that we saw on the 15th of December when Georgia was granted uh, the status of candidate uh, were as enthusiastic as are the young people today on the streets. So it's very clear when Georgia has to say it in the opinion polls, it says it, it says it in the votes, and it says it by walking on the streets. Uh, the dream, it's the European dream. Salam Azarbishvili, the president of Georgia, thank you very much for making time for VOA. Thank you.